Hello, Jeff Zwerink here. Welcome to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas to see how they relate to the truth of Christianity. Today, I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Dr. Fuzz Rana, and we're going to be talking about goosebumps. Fuzz, it's good to have you here today. Thanks, Jeff. It's good to be with you. <laughs> to talk about such a, an important topic. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I mean, it seems kind of trivial at some level. And, uh, you know, I know growing up in the Midwest, goosebumps were just kind of a, a common feature. As it got cold, that's where they tend to show up out in California. I tend to not experience them a whole lot. But what, what's the big stink about goosebumps? That seems like a trivial conversation to be having. Yeah, well, I mean, goosebumps, you know, clearly are kind of a, a peculiar part of our physiology. But believe it or not, for many people who subscribe to an evolutionary view of life, they argue that, that goosebumps that human beings experience is a compelling evidence for the fact that we have a, an evolutionary history, that we share an evolutionary origin with the great apes, uh, because they see goosebumps as essentially being like a vestigial response to cold or to uh, fright. And, uh, and as a result of that, see that as, again, evidence that are, we have evolved. So presumably this is something that doesn't appear to have any function today outside of allowing you to see whether somebody's cold or surprised, if you will, uh, but it had a, a more important advantage or benefit earlier in our history. And so that's why, that, that, that's the nature of the vestigial part. It was useful earlier, it now no longer is, sign that we're evolutionarily, have some evolutionary history, correct? That, yeah, that's right. So the, the idea would be that the phenomena that causes goosebumps in us is actually a, a, a physiological mechanism that uh, animals, mammals specifically, would use as a way to keep themselves warm when it got cold or as a, a means by which they could make themselves appear to be more menacing if they were threatened by a predator or some other, uh, some other animal. And the idea is that that mechanism uh, no longer is useful for humans because we've lost much of our body hair, but yet that, that phenomena still re is part of our physiology as a leftover remnant of our evolutionary history. Well, so that kind of strikes me in, in, in odd in at least one way. It's like, if it's no longer useful, why do we still have it? Won't it? I mean, that, that seems like something that should have gone away fairly quickly if it wasn't useful for us, or am I thinking on too short of a time scale there? Well, no, no, I think that's, that's a legitimate point is that if indeed, uh, you know, goosebumps were essentially a, a vestige of our evolutionary history, you would expect that eventually uh, the, 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 the biological systems that are responsible for goosebumps would atrophy to the point that we wouldn't experience them. And, and, and by the way, goosebumps are caused by uh, the contraction of, of a muscle called the erector pili that is connected to hair follicles. And so when it uh, uh, contracts, the hair follicles move, and that movement is what's responsible for creating goosebumps. They protrude out of our skin. So in animals that have fur, that, that protrusion creates an air pocket that serves as a source of insulation for them in, when they're cold uh, and, uh, you know, uh, or when they're, again, uh, threatened, that, that, again, that protrusion makes them puff up and look to be more menacing. And, and so the, the, the question is, is that do goosebumps serve any kind of real use in humans? Because if they do, then you could argue that goosebumps actually are not a vestige of evolution, but actually reflect common design as opposed to a, a shared evolutionary history. Okay, so it really does seem like there's an evolutionary explanation for why we have goosebumps. Uh, kind of dig in, what, I mean, what, as a creation or someone who believes that God has created things, are there other functions? I mean, what have you found as you've looked, in, as you've looked into this? Well, I mean, for example, you could say that the, the fact that you see somebody with goosebumps and that tells you right away that they're either surprised or that they are cold or maybe that they're experiencing uh, some kind of intense joy. It, that, that is a signaling mechanism that allows us to communicate uh, with one another, com particularly communicate our emotional status or emotional state. So to me, that signaling is actually a function. But on top of that, recently a team of researchers discovered that the erector pili actually provides scaffolding for something known as sympathetic nerves. These are the nerves that allow us to sense the environment and then communicate what's happening in the environment to our different biological systems. 
And so if it wasn't for the erector pili, the sympathetic nerves in our skin would actually not have the proper positioning to carry out their, their physiological function. So in addition to serving as a, a contraction mechanism to cause hair follicles to protrude, it also serves as a, as a scaffolding that position the sympathetic nerves in the just right location. So that's an additional function that we've just learned about, which if we would adopt the creation model, we would predict that the more that we learn about the erector pili and its physiological role, the more that we see reasons why we as human beings uh, have those muscles in, in a fully functional state and why we would experience goosebumps. So that, so that sounds fascinating. Let, let, I want to kind of step back. You said that the sympathetic nerves without the erector pili would retract, which I, I'm gathering would impact our ability to sense the environment. Kind of, I, I would like, can you give a little more detail of what's going on there? Uh, I, I'm having trouble getting a good picture of that. Yeah, well, for example, uh, in, in, a, in, in mice uh, model systems, uh, researchers have discovered that the sympathetic nerve, again, not only causes the erector pili to contract, but also uh, the sympathetic nerve is placed right at the bed of the hair follicle and will actually release neurochemicals that will cause stem cells at that bed to undergo uh, replication and, as a result of that, produce new hair follicles. So, for example, in animals, uh, in mammals, this is a, a, an elegant mechanism where there's both a short-term and a long-term response to being in a, in a cold environment or being in an environment where you're threatened on an ongoing basis. And so this is suggesting that, that the positioning of the sympathetic nerve is really very important uh, in mammals. And likewise, it's not clear to me whether that is a, a critical mechanism for our physiology as human beings but it does indicate that the positioning of the sympathetic nerve is really very important, not only for stimulating the erector pili, but for other, other possible functions that haven't necessarily yet been discovered in human beings. Uh, but I would predict that eventually we'll, we'll discover that the positioning of the sympathetic nerve is important uh, for our physiology as well. So, so it sounds like the erector pili are kind of right up on the surface. The sympathetic nerves are deeper in the skin. And by having the erector pili, it keeps the sympathetic nerves up closer to the surface so that they can do what they need to to sense the environment. Is that, is that kind of the picture? Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And so because of this, again, this discovery, uh, I think you could legitimately look at the goosebumps that we experience as human beings as really not a vestige of evolution, but actually a design feature for our anatomy and physiology that reflects the creator's handiwork. Well, thanks, Fuzz. I appreciate your comments. Uh, you know, goosebumps do seem like kind of a trivial, almost useless thing. And in fact, they kind of lend themselves, if you will, to a vestigial evolutionary explanation. But what I find fascinating is that as we've dug in deeper, we find that there may actually be good design features that actually allow us to function as humans much better. You know, I'd encourage you to go to reasons.org and check out Fuzz's latest blog on this. Do goosebumps send a chill down the spine of the creation model? It will give you a better understanding of how goosebumps work, what are the, the, the biochemical mechanisms and the scaffolding that goes on in there, and help you understand how this is a well-designed system that actually points to a mind and allows us to understand this creation that that mind has made for us.